I'm going to discuss uh, a couple of, of new items about Excel. I'm going to talk about how to use if statements. Um, I'm not going to cover the and or the or logical statements because those are pretty straightforward. If statement might be the, the more complicated one. And I'm going to discuss how to use um, conditional formatting. In other words, how to do something like change the color of the text within a cell based on the value in the cell, which could be useful. I mean, one of the, the obvious, obvious uses would be if you were doing uh, accounting spreadsheets and you wanted to put negative numbers in red, for example. Okay, now with that, what I want to do is simulate the toss of a coin where you get heads or tails. And um, so if you want to just toss a coin a few times, I guess there's no particular reason why you can't toss a coin. But if you want to toss a coin 50 times or 100 times or 100,000 times, um, it could be a... Uh, a significant task. We can simulate a coin toss in Excel. So let me show you how to do that. So uh, I'm going to set the headings on my columns here. First column I'm going to generate a random number. Oh. Yeah, let me just here. I don't know what's going on with that there. So there, generate. Now click here, random number. And uh, now let me expand this column a little bit so it takes that whole word, random number, or whole two words. Right here I'll put 0 or 1 because I'm going to want to convert that random number into a 0 or 1. That's all. And then I'm going to go heads or tails. So the 0 or 1 will then get converted into heads or tails. Now this is a bit more complicated than we need to do in order to generate the words heads or tails here. Uh, and I'll show you some of the easier ways to do that, but uh, in particular I want to do it this way to begin with. To generate a random number, I want to use the RAND random number generator. So our A and uh, RAND function comes up here and RAND generates a random number uniformly distributed from 0 to 1. But I, I, let's say I want a random number uniformly distributed from negative a half to a half. So in order to do that, I'll just subtract a half like that. So there we go. So now I have a random number here uniformly distributed between negative a half and a half. And I'm going to drag this down to row 51. That gives me 50 such random numbers there. There we go. Okay, now, um, zero, uh, I want to convert that random number into a simple zero or one. I'm going to use an if statement to do that. So right in here, I'm going to type equals if, and I have lowercase, it will convert it to uppercase when I hit return, if, a2, I'll just type A2. If A2 is less than 0, and then I'll put a comma. If A2 is less than 0, the output of this function will be a 1. Otherwise, the output of the function will be 0. And then I'll hit uh, a parenthesis and then return. So let me just look at this again. On, I could have put a2 less than 0 also in parentheses, but I didn't. It wasn't necessary. So it takes, looks at the value of A2. If it's less than 0, in this case it is, it generates a 1. If it's not less than 0, it generates a 0. So if it's greater than 0, it'll generate a 0. If it's equal to 0, it will generate a 0. Now, the, uh, the probability that this random number is going to exactly equal zero is vanishingly small. It's not zero, but it's really small. 
And uh, so I can then say with reasonable certainty that the probability of getting a 1 here is 50%, and the probability of getting a 0 there is also 50%. Now, I'm going to want to take whatever function is in here and copy it all the way down to row 51. So in order to do that, I simply double click on the bottom right hand corner there and it fills everything in. See, I click here. If A16 is less than 0, I get a 1, otherwise a 0, and so on. Okay, now I want to convert this 1 or 0 here into heads or tails. Okay, so I want to use another if statement. Equal. Okay, if. I'm going to put two paren here, because that's what I'm going to need um, the way I'm writing it here. If B2 is equal to 1, and then close paren there. So if B2, which is this number here now, if that's equal to 1, then I'm going to generate the word heads and I put it, because it's going to be a word, a text, I put it in quotes, heads, end quote, comma. Otherwise, I want the word tails. And then close paren, and then hit return. OK, so 0 becomes tails, a 1 should become heads. I can just check that here. I could drag it down here and I get heads if it's a 1. Now I can drag this all the way down to uh, the end right here. There. Okay. I could have double clicked on the, on the corner if I wanted. Okay, so now we're generating heads or tails. The word heads or tails. Um, one more thing, uh, the advantage of having zeros and ones here is I can actually count the number of heads that are produced. And I'll come down here to the bottom, and then I'll type uh, total total number of heads and that's going to equal you know, let me make it fit in that space. So I'll just put total heads instead of number of total heads equals. And now here I'm going to put use the sum function here. Total heads there. there. Now equals sum. I'll do sum, and I'll click here and shift click up here and so it should fill in the sum of all of the ones in that column so I get 27 so I know I have 27 heads and uh, let's see I can delete I don't want that there okay now I'll get 24 heads it recomputed okay now uh, the next thing I want to do is figure out how to change the color of the these words heads and tails to let's say red and blue i want to want maybe the word tails to be red the word heads to be blue whenever they appear here in the column and i'm going to do that go to the home button and go to conditional formatting right here so i click on conditional formatting and go down to manage rules. And um, you can see there are a number of options here in conditional formatting, but I have, don't use this a lot, but I have used it to change the color of an entry based on the value. And I do that with manage rules right here, manage rules. And um, now let me, let me stop that a minute because I'm going to want everything here down in here is going to be um, determined 
I can select everything here just like that all the words here uh, are going to follow this color rule that I'm going to set up so I have conditional formatting now if I could also select the entire column just by clicking on the C and that selects the entire column here so I go back to conditional formatting manage rules right here and I want to add a rule so I do that now let's see first let me set tails to reds because that's the easiest one because I have already know how to do this and um, so I don't want two color scale I want to go into this menu and hit classic format only top or bottom ranked values I don't want to do that either what I want to do is to format only cells that contain specific text containing let's say the letter H uppercase H here we go H and uh, what I want to do is to I don't want this right here I could pick that light red fill with dark red and uh, format with red text is all I want red text so it's going to put red text in there now hit OK so this is my rule if the word see I think I maybe did that wrong too let me edit the rule I don't want heads to be red I want tails to be red so let me do this tails there there we go okay okay now I'm going to add a rule for making heads blue so go here let me click OK now I want a conditional formatting I could have guess I could have done that without hitting OK want to add a rule okay two color scale don't want that I want to go back to classic okay don't want to do that I want to format cells that contain uh, specific text containing uppercase H there we go I don't want to do this here I want to do custom format and the only thing I want to do is make the color blue so I double click or single click sorry hit blue hit OK and uh, okay no that didn't work it, it, uh, the background needs to be needed to be uh, I want it to background to be just white so uh, let me go in and edit that rule again edit and uh, custom format and um, fill I don't want it to be pink I want it to be no color now let me hit OK OK now this is blue text so blue text for heads red text for tails I hit OK and indeed notice that's what I have right here red tails blue heads and so on now I could uh, let me just take everything along here for a while and let me center everything like that I could center it like that if I so choose and, um, and then I could drag that down see him or I could double click oh that's not working so here let me just go here here we go just drag it down and mess with that there we go okay now um, so I've used two if statements I've used an if statement here and an if statement here and um, one of the reasons why I went to 0 and 1 first is so it would be easy for me let's say to count the numbers of heads and tails now I want to show you one thing to do is I can nest if statements so this is a complicated way of doing that but 
let me do it right here. Um, I could right there at that point, instead of having an if statement here and then an if statement here, it uses that if statement in, in here because it uses the value of B3, which I computed with an if statement. I can combine those two if statements into a single if statement. Here, now let me uh, show you how that might work. And we don't need to do it actually in this example, but there can be times when we need to nest if statements. We're doing something complicated. So there, I've typed that out. So I've replaced, instead of saying if b2 is equal to 1, notice what I'm doing is I've actually produced the if statement that generates b2 equal to either 0 or 1. Right here, that's what this if statement does. If a2 were less than 0, then b2 will be 0, otherwise b2 will be 1. And then if b2 is 1, I want to produce a tails. Uh, otherwise, I produce a heads. So that is nested if statements. And then uh, and for some reason, it doesn't like that formula. Not sure why. Let me go back up here. Let me put in a parenthesis. No, here, the easiest thing to do might be just to type the formula there. So let me type it. Equals. Um, if okay, if paren if a2 if a2 is less than 0, comma 0, comma 1, in paren, equals 1, then I do comma, tails, quote, comma, heads, There we go. There. Okay, so you see it's producing tails just like it should right there. And you can then add the conditional formatting. Now, but that's a really complicated way of doing it. I just wanted to show you that in, you can nest if statements. It would be much more straightforward right here to just rewrite this if statement or this if statement as follows. I put equal if a2 is less than 0, comma, heads comma tails so here I just look at the random number generated if it's less than zero I write the word heads otherwise I write the word tails hit return and then that works so um, this is showing nested if statements using both of these if statements together. This has got separate if statements. And this is replacing the if statement in column B with a if statement that just generates the word heads or tails directly. Okay, uh, that's, that's it for this video.